Hi, and welcome to another episode of GBMC's What's Up, Dr. Dovek. I am Dr. Betsy Dovek, and I am diving into a fantastic registered dietitian here at GBMC. And this time, I'm not talking about one of my bariatric dietitians. I'm not talking about Jana Wolf today. You're going to meet Carrie. Carrie is an oncology dietitian. So cancer, it is a tough diagnosis to take. It can be met with, oh my goodness, what is ahead for me? What will my prognosis be like? What will my treatment plan be like? There are so many uncertainties and unknowns, and that can be so scary. But Carrie offers something very unique at GBMC, and guess what? It doesn't cost the patients anything. She is a dietitian. She offers nutritional counseling for patients who have cancer of any kind at GBMC. So with that, Carrie, welcome. Welcome to our program. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. So I want to dive in and I just want to talk a lot about the different types of cancer and how you get involved. So where is the first place or the first time that you typically meet a patient? I generally like to meet a patient from the moment they have a cancer diagnosis. I enjoy meeting a patient right from the beginning so that I can establish a rapport with the patient and help them with any questions that they might have from the very beginning. Like you said, there, when someone gets a diagnosis of cancer, there's always questions. We hear about nutrition and cancer all over the news. Everyone seems to have an opinion about what somebody should eat when they're diagnosed with cancer. We don't know what is real, what is a myth, and I like to be there to give them what is fact versus what is fiction. And so I like to be involved as early as possible to help guide them through their entire cancer journey. Wow, and I've heard that you get involved at varying stages of that journey. So early on, a patient might need to have chemotherapy, let's say. How do you get involved right then and there with a patient who's undergoing chemo? I love to meet with the patient while they're getting chemotherapy. I pull a chair over right next to the chair that they're sitting in getting chemotherapy, and I'll sit down and I'll have a conversation with the patient. It might take 10 minutes, it might take 30 minutes, but I'll sit and I'll talk to the patient. I'll find out what they're experiencing, what is individually what their individual experience is with their specific chemotherapy and whatever is ailing them, whatever their side effects are, I will talk to them. I'll give them uh, specific recommendations and I'll try to help them with what they're experiencing so that they can feel better so that their quality of life through treatment can hopefully be improved. Patients undergoing chemo is obviously a little scary, the fear of the unknown again. What is this gonna feel like? What's it gonna be like? And then there's a lot of side effects, you know? You might lose your appetite. How has this all been happening in these last couple months with COVID-19? What have you had to do to still be there for these patients when they're getting these life-saving treatments by their bedside in person? Well, unfortunately, a lot of patients have only seen my eyes. Many people have not seen my smile. Um, but fortunately, I am still able to see patients in person with full PPE and being farther distanced away. I am spending more time on the phone than I have before. I'm doing video visits if possible with patients. And just again, spending more time on the phone following up with patients. But I am able to see patients in person, but with patients having the understanding that I have the full PPE on and that they are just not able to see all of me, but just, covered face um, as full PPE as they would likely prefer. Wow, so I can imagine that some of these patients who have cancer and are under, are potentially of course immunocompromised because of these treatments with chemo, do you, do you see the fear for them? Do they, do you see the fear in their eyes, the scared? I mean, look, you're coming at them with full on equipment. You're protecting yourself. Of course, you're protecting them. Um, how do you feel like that? What does that do for their psyche? 
I think they feel better knowing that someone is coming to help them. I have not had any patients be scared or concerned that I was, am coming to talk to them. Uh, they understand and appreciate that I have full PPE on and that I'm, I'm keeping distance. And they appreciate that I'm coming to talk to them about something that's worrying them. And I think when I'm coming to talk to them about something that's scaring them, um, if they're losing weight because they can't eat, they're scared about that. And it's something that they want to take care of. And it's something that they want suggestions for. It's something that they can't take control of. Um, and it's something that is controlling them. And when they have somebody coming to talk to them about that, um, regardless of coronavirus and all the restrictions that we have going on right now, I think that they're very appreciative that there's just somebody there to help. I mean, I can imagine. I think that the care that you're giving is is very comprehensive. It's more than just giving dietary advice. I can see that you're making connections with these people. You're building relationships with them, and you're helping their the the mental health of of this through the services you provide. And I hope that patients at GBMC, again, of all types of cancer, know that your services are available. So tell me, what are some tips and tricks that you can provide when patients just, they don't have an appetite. They are, they're sick and they just, you know, they feel so down and that's, you know, food is a big part of our lives. And mm -hmm. what do you do, do you feel like to really help them to get through that so they can get their nutritional goals, but also be satisfied? What's difficult is as a dietitian, Sometimes I have to tell people to do the opposite of what is healthy just to get them through treatment. So sometimes I have to tell people to purchase frozen meals. Not that frozen meals aren't healthy. They absolutely are. But if somebody thinks of frozen meals as something that they can't consume because they've always had to worry about the salt in their, their diet then they've always been told not to consume frozen meals. Well, if they're very fatigued from their treatment, I tell them to, to buy frozen meals because then they can go to the, the freezer, pop in a frozen meal in the microwave, and they've got a meal in a couple of minutes and they don't have to prepare anything. And that just makes dinner that much easier. Or I tell them to get takeout um, if they can afford it and if it's not a problem. I say, don't cook if you don't have to, just order more takeout because again, then you don't have to prepare the food yourself. Other options are things like the good old milkshake, smoothies, things like Ensure, Boost, things that are prepared for us. Um, sometimes people don't have to eat food, they can drink their food. So when you think of those commercials, when you see the kids drinking the Pediasure, well, the same thing goes for adults. We don't have to eat a meal if eating a meal is too hard, but we can drink our meal instead. And it works out just the same. And so there's so many different versions of those shakes and, and pre-made um, supplements and smoothies that, that people can either make themselves and I can give them recipes for those shakes or they can go buy the pre-made ones that again, all they have to do is go to the refrigerator or a family member can go to the refrigerator, pull one out, open up the cap, and as they can slowly drink it over an hour or two and, and there's their meal. And sometimes it just helps release that stress that people have with eating um, because it is so stressful when they're going through treatment and having the side effects. And sometimes having those recommendations just takes that, that stress away. You know, I love that. I think uh, sometimes we go by the book and the advice that we offer. Well, you should be eating three square meals a day with protein and fruits and vegetables and hit all of these different criteria. And that is it. Here's your guidelines go. But I love what you just said. You said, look, I'm going to look at you on a personal level. I'm looking at you as a person who has you know, different needs, different incomes, different situations. Maybe they're by themselves. They're not a cook. They don't know what to do and they're sick and maybe tired and they just need something easy. So the fact that you give them permission to still get some kind of nutrition in them, but hey, it might not be the conventional thing. We'll get you there at some point, but I'm going to meet you where you're at and make you feel better about that treatment. I spend a lot of time 
telling people that they don't have to eat perfect during treatment. A lot of people will say to me, but I'm not eating enough fruits and vegetables. And I often have to tell them, I, I don't care. Right now, your body doesn't care. You're losing weight. You need calories. You need protein. Fruits and vegetables don't give you enough calories and protein. That's not what we want right now. And so I do spend a lot of time kind of doing the anti-diet diet. And so um, sometimes the dietitian in me does the complete opposite of everything that I was trained to do. Hey, I, I completely get it. And I think the most important thing that you're doing, though, is taking care of the patient and, and getting them through something tough. And ultimately, that's, that's fantastic. So tell me, how did you get into this? How are you becoming a, an oncology dietitian? How does one get into that field of medicine? I went to, uh, when I was studying nutrition in college, um, I then had to go through a dietetic internship. And I was going through my dietetic internship, not enjoying any of my rotations. I didn't like diabetes. I didn't like cardiac. So I wasn't, I was really unsure what I wanted to do with then my nutrition degree. And I was very worried about what I was going to become as a dietitian. My oncology rotation was my final rotation and I fell in love and I just was lucky enough to work in oncology ever since then. I think what I fell in love with oncology was that you got to have relationships with patients. And I think you can understand that from a bariatric perspective. You know patients long term. I've known patients for 10, 12 years and I still get to see them and I get to see them thrive. And I see patients every week for three months in a row. And I love that. And I love to be able to help them for such long periods of time. And you don't necessarily get that with, with other parts of, of, um, dietetics. And so I love that with oncology. And so I've been doing this for the last 16 years and I can't imagine working with any other type of um, patient. Well, I know that you used to be at a very large academic center that shall remain nameless. You were there for a little while and then uh, you quickly changed over to GBMC and you've been here for most of your career. So mm -hmm. I have to ask, how um, did you end up coming here and, and why have you stayed so long? Why do you like GBMC? I love GBMC. I love that I can walk down the halls of GBMC and everybody says hi to everybody. Any other institution that I've worked at, that doesn't happen. And that I think is just one thing that makes GBMC so remarkable. Uh, I've never met anybody here that is not happy to work here and be here. But I came to work at GBMC uh, mainly because I thought I could do at the cancer center what I wanted to do at the cancer center I was at previously, that I could not do where I was previously. And where I am, I'm able to give the care that I can receive, the individualized care that I can receive, that I can, that I can provide, um, that I could not provide where I was previously. And it's just nice to be able to have the team around me that allows me to do what I want to do here um, nobody holds me back. If I have an idea of something I want to do, they just say, go ahead, go do it. Um, I have full control, um, full reins of, of kind of my own sort of practice. Um, and it's, it's wonderful. And I love that we have a, a designated head and neck cancer center here, which provides wonderful care to our head and neck cancer patients. It really is above and beyond care, uh, to our head and neck patients that, is not found anywhere else in the country. And that was one thing that really drew me to GBMC as well. Yeah, I mean, our Milton Dance um, Head and Neck Center is absolutely world renowned. It is very impressive. And it's because of the team that includes people like you that are offering these services. Now, I think it's important to note though, that if you have cancer, any type of cancer, head and neck cancer, but also breast cancer, endometrial cancer, bone cancer, whatever type of cancer you have. And if you are a GBMC patient, you can see Carrie. 
Carrie would love, love, love to offer you nutritional advice that, as you heard, she customizes, she individualizes to you and your specific needs. Certain cancers have different requirements and she knows that, she's trained in that, and she can offer you very helpful tips and tricks to help you to get through that difficult time in your life. So Carrie, if my doctor for some reason doesn't tell me about you, how do I find you? How do I get started? I would love to be part of your services. Well, the best way to find me is you can search on the GBMC website for my name, Carrie Rainiac, or you can just search oncology dietitian. I believe I come up that way. Or you can search for the MG Dance Head and Neck. I have a page on the MG Dance Head and Neck Center website, or you can call me directly at 443-849-8186, the number that's on the bottom of the screen. I am happy to take your calls. We can schedule appointments one-on-one. -on -one. We can talk on the phone. We can meet while you're here getting treatment. Um, we can have televisits at this time. I do Zoom visits. Um, we can do Skype visits. We can get in touch in any way that, that you um, would like to get in touch with, but you can reach out to me directly. You can ask your physician or you can ask your nurse to get in touch with me, um, but I'm here, here to help. I have to say that Carrie and I, for those of you watching, Carrie and I both went to Penn State. We were both nutrition majors there around the same time, and we both received the same training. And I know from my personal practice the absolute importance of nutrition. Nutrition is the thing that makes you feel great. It can feel make you feel lousy. It's the fuel to keep you going. And Carrie offering it specific to patients going through oncology treatments is just something very special. So I really encourage you, if you are watching and you're like, well, my doctor didn't say anything, or maybe I don't know if I qualify. You qualify, she wants to see you. She wants you to call this number, call this number right here, 443-849-8186. That's her direct line. She'll answer, she'll call you back, and she wants to meet with you because she wants to give you even better care. She'll meet you in your chemotherapy appointments, when you're going at radiation, through telemedicine, in person, you name it. She's gonna be there to help you through that particular time. This has been awesome. This is awesome. I know you said you were nervous. You were not nervous. That was amazing, a wealth of information you provided to us. What would you love to leave our viewers with in terms of the service that you specifically provide? Just to remind them that I'm a free service to patients so that I'm here. They don't have to worry. I am not, when they think about dietitians, I don't want anyone to think that I'm intimidating. I'm not coming to them with any crazy diet um, or anything like that, just that I'm coming just to help um, with kindness and um, just, just here to help. I love it, I love it. So on behalf of GBMC, that's it for this edition of What's Up Dr. Dovek. I hope you will connect with Carrie. Again, you can call her and check out the website. She is a very incredible wealth of resources for you. Here is her information again at the bottom of the screen. I thank you for attending. And if you are struggling with cancer, we see you, we feel you, and we hope that we can heal you and help you with this process. Thank you again. Mm -hmm.